Greetings, my friends. Evangelist Joey Belmore here for another Signs of the Times report. And uh, this will be the first segment of probably three segments that I'm going to upload this afternoon. And in this particular segment here, we're going to talk about the U.S. and NATO and the deepening rift with Russia, China, and even uh, Iran. As I've previously mentioned, we're going to look in depth at that. The second segment, we'll probably talk about the Asia Pacific uh, from the South China Sea to North Korea. And, of course, in the third segment, we're going to touch on the Middle East and a lot of the uh, important developments going on over there. So uh, let's just uh, jump right into it here in this first segment where we're going to focus on the whole um, rift that's going on between not only the U.S. and NATO on one side, but on the other side, you've got Russia, China, and Iran. And I did a video recently uh, titled The, the uh, Eurasian Golden Triangle, and I talked a little bit about that and shared a piece with you. And we're seeing this trend just continue to intensify, as uh, I seem to always be saying, but it's like every day uh, things progress further and further. And, you know, uh, conflicts uh, of, of biblical proportions don't just happen overnight. You know, they're uh, years and years in the making. And, uh, and and that's what we're seeing with all the strategic military positioning that's been going on. Uh, and I've talked a lot about that, how NATO has been building up their military in uh, Eastern Europe along the borders of Russia. And, uh, and how Russia is, you know, responding uh, accordingly, of course. And... Um, just so many other things going on and it's just more signs of the times that Jesus said would precede his second coming. You know, he talked about the wars and rumors of wars, kingdom rising against kingdom and nation against nation and we're certainly seeing uh, this as an intensifying a trend and a, certainly a sign of the times. Um, but m moving along here, uh, it was reported that a U.S. State Department spokesman has taken a swipe at Beijing and Moscow, basically saying that their militarization is making the world unsafe. And uh, John Kirby said this is a view shared by much of the rest of the international community. So we see this uh, now with the United States, uh, uh, the U.S. State Department has accused China and Russia of increasing global tensions while NATO is intensifying globally as many people are well aware. And the piece here goes on to say that spokesperson Kirby for the U.S. Department of State told a press briefing on Thursday that U.S. military expansion into Eastern Europe and the South China Sea, which we'll talk about in the next segment, is at the, be uh, the behest of its allies, while dismissing that this could be perceived as a threat by Russia and China. And uh, there's a quote here, and it says, Our allies and partners, I think, find it pretty comforting and reassuring that there is a U.S. military presence in the region, which will continue, Kirby replied when asked about NATO's move towards the east not being perceived as a threat, or U.S. ships sailing uh, into the South China Sea. And... It's interesting you see that, uh, you know, they, they're on the, uh, in Eastern Europe along the borders of Russia, and then they're on the other side, you know, in the Asia Pacific. And uh, so you can see how they're kind of encircling Russia and China. And, you know, this uh, Kirby uh, fella here from the U.S. State Department, uh, he says that uh, he thinks that these people will find it... Uh, Comforting and reassuring that there's a U.S. military presence in the region. Well, if it's comforting and reassuring, why did uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin come out and designate uh, the United States and NATO as threats to national security in a recent document that was signed, and as I previously reported in other videos? And, I mean, and that's just the tip of the iceberg on the tensions that are reaching uh, Cold War-type uh, status, if you will. And so... Here we see that the U.S. State Department is uh, accusing China and Russia of increasing global tensions as the saber-rattling continues internationally here. And uh, the U.S. military test-fired its second intercontinental ballistic missile in a week uh, back on Thursday night, seeking to demonstrate its nuclear arms capacity at a time of rising strategic tensions with Russia and North Korea. And this piece goes on to talk about that. Uh, as the headline says here, 
that uh, they're testing these uh, intercontinental ballistic missiles to stress its power to Russia and North Korea. And you can see how even North Korea, if they hype up that nuclear threat enough, that that could be used as a pretext to have military presence on the on the other side as well, not just down in the South China Sea, but up around North Korea. In fact, they've already got military presence up there, and we're going to look at that in the second segment. But again, you see here uh, that Russia is uh, being hyped up as a, a threat once again here, and that's consistent with what we've been looking at. Meanwhile, uh, U.S. Secretary of Defense Ashton Carter has been focused on the world's Great Power Conflict, as he called it, in the 2017 Department of Defense budget. And he says that one of his assistants, in reference to Washington's adversaries, including China and Russia. So we see in this report um, that, uh, and this is for military spending, that Russia and China are referenced as potential adversaries. I mentioned Russia and China. Let's not forget about that third part of that uh, Eurasian Golden Triangle, Iran. And this is a piece here from globalresearch.ca that I'll link you up with in the description box below with everything else that talks about Iran's uh, military capabilities and how uh, it, it's enhanced uh, uh, and recent strengthening of ties with uh, Russia and China uh, and the cooperation with these two nations militarily is... Uh, you know, something that uh, is going to only lead to greater conflict as, uh, you know, all the major world powers are being drawn into the into conflict. If you just look at what's going on around the world, and it's certainly a, a sign of the times, my friends. And we need to be watchful and, and steadfast in prayer and enduring in faith and, and, and sharing the gospel with everyone because... Uh, you know, time is probably shorter than a lot of us realize. Now, no man knows the day or the hour, but uh, if things continue to progress uh, in the fashion in which they are, um, we're going to see some major biblical prophecies come to pass in our lifetime right before our very eyes. And in this piece here, it talks about how NATO threatened Russia, and then at the 2016 Munich Security Conference, uh, the uh, Russian Prime Minister Dmitry Medvedev uh, came out in a speech and state, said that we are rolling into a new Cold War. And it, it specifically highlights the deterioration of relations between Russia and the West. Meanwhile, uh, the German Foreign Minister came out and stated that the Cold War rhetoric is actually oversimplifying what is actually a global situation. And he said the, a return to the Cold War rhetoric represents oversimplification uh, of the current situation in the international relations. And the German foreign minister, uh, Frank Walter Steinmeier, uh, went on to talk about how uh, that the situation is complicated by the fact that the standoff actually engages multiple sides, not just two opponents. And that's important to, to recognize here. There may be uh, the major world powers that are at the head of this conflict, uh, as we will continue to look at, with the U.S., NATO, and the West on one side. And then you got Russia, China, and Iran, and others on the other side. And then there's, you know, all kinds of other uh, uh, nations that will fall into line as this conflict erupts in the region. And uh, that's not even to mention what's going on uh, over in the Asia Pacific, which we'll talk about in the second segment, and more importantly, what's happening in the Middle East, specifically over in the Syria uh, right now. So uh, I'd have to agree with the sentiments from this uh, German foreign minister, uh, because it's not really just Cold War, again, between Russia and the U.S. It's more of a World War type scenario, a World War III type scenario as we head towards Armageddon and the uh, headlines continue to uh, reveal the signs of the times and, and progress forward uh, as the Word of God comes alive all around us. And the ex apparently, uh, the existing U.S. missile shield is incapable of withstanding a massive strike of Russian nuclear intercontinental ballistic missiles, according to the commander of Russia's strategic missile troops in uh, his statements at a press conference. 
The analysis of Russian military experts has found that neither the firepower potential nor the data computing capacity of the currently deployed U.S. missile defense installations could deal with a swarm attack of the Russian nuclear triad strategic missile troops commander Colonel General Sergei Karakhev uh, told journalists on Wednesday. And uh, so we see that the uh, r this Russian commander is, uh, you know, saying that the U.S. missile shield over there in Eastern Europe is unable to stop a Russian ICBM attack. The U.K. will reportedly send what's uh, reported here as five extra ships to the Baltic and additional troops to be stationed on a rotational basis in six countries bordering Russia. A decision to, uh, excuse me, a decision on the number of troops is expected to be taken at the NATO summit in the Polish capital, Warsaw, in the summer. And um, it says here that uh, British Defense Secretary Michael Fallon said increasing our NATO uh, deployments sends a strong message to our enemies that we are ready to respond to any threat and defend our allies. And basically the piece uh, talks about how Britain is planning to deploy more ships and troops to join the uh, uh, North Atlantic Treaty Organization or NATO and their buildup against Russia. And this buildup continues here in this piece from CNN as it was reported that the United States Air Force is going to send six F-15 fighter jets over to a, a, a military base in Finland. And Finland is, of course, in northeastern uh, Europe, basically on the Russian border over there as the buildup just continues on the Russian borders. And now we're seeing, uh, uh, you know, F-15 fighter jets, uh, six of them being deployed over there to, to the, uh, uh, you know, forces and troops and what have you that are already amassing along this border uh, from the northeastern to southeastern uh, Europe uh, as this NATO military uh, strategic positioning continues. Another piece here. Uh, talking about how the U.S. military occupation in Eastern Europe is intensifying and how it can be deemed as nothing more than a, 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 a threat to Russia as this buildup uh, occurs uh, on its borders. And so I'll link you up to this piece uh, talking more about that. And according to a Russian parliament speaker, NATO's expansion toward Russia and Belarus is aggressive. And Sergei Naryshkin, the Speaker of the Lower House of the Russian Parliament, said that NATO and the European Union's policies towards Russia are not constructive as they undermine the principles of international law, global and regional security, and mutually beneficial economic cooperation. Goes on to say that NATO's increased presence in Europe near the Russian and Belarus borders is an aggressive policy which will continue in the future, the Speaker of the Lower House of Russian Parliament said on Thursday. And so, you know, there's again warnings of this uh, um, uh, NATO military buildup and increasing, uh, ever increasing presence uh, over on the uh, Russian borders in Eastern Europe. Meanwhile, a Latvian official has uh, come out and he was speaking to a Latvian radio station and uh, this Latvian uh, official is actually a presidential advisor. His name uh, is Yanis uh, uh, Kazachins, and he suggested that NATO must demonstrate its readiness to strike Russia, adding that Russia is a country that must be spoken to not only in the language of diplomacy, and Latvia, he said, would make every effort to make a normal country out of Russia. And, I mean, this is... a uh, just only adding to uh, intense relations or what's already very tense relations over there in the region. Um, and uh, he said here, failing to specify what he meant by the latter comment, the uh, presidential advisor went on to say only that Russia would definitely change and that this is only a matter of time. 
At the same time, the British-born former head of Latvian intelligence explained, Russia takes advantage of weakness. If the Russians see our readiness to strike, this commands their respect. So you see, it's all about uh, uh, military shows of force, uh, uh, and uh, things are continuing to spiral out of control over there in uh, the European areas uh, uh, close to the borders of Russia. And speaking of Latvia, the uh, Latvian foreign minister, he's come out and stated that NATO needs to increase its presence in the Baltic region, giving Russia's annexation of uh, Crimea in 2014 and continued support for separatists in eastern Ukraine. And so he's calling for a, a, a not only a, an increase, but a substantial increase of NATO uh, presence over there in the Baltics as things continue to uh, uh, ramp up uh, militarily. More on the Baltics here as uh, Russia is apparently going to continue their drills near the western borders over the situation over there according to a Russian commander. And um, he said here, and it says, as you can see on the screen, Russian airborne troops are acting with due account of the tense situation in the Baltic republics, which has a tendency towards aggravation, a top-ranking Russian military says. And so uh, we see e even, you know, uh, the fact that NATO is building up their military presence in the region, that uh, Russia is uh, uh, on a similar path. Of course, they need, they need to respond accordingly. If, uh, you know, uh, there's a military buildup on their borders, well, they need to make sure they're ready to thwart any type of threat that could potentially arise. And they've already deemed, as I mentioned previously, the U.S. and NATO specifically in a document signed by the Russian President Vladimir Putin that they are threats to natural, uh, nat excuse me, national security. And uh, so... This piece goes on to talk a little bit more about these uh, Russian uh, military drills over uh, at near the western borders uh, in what's a tense situation over in the Baltic region. Earlier I talked about how people were referencing the Cold War era and apparently NATO is actually increasing their storage of tanks and other military hardware in the Cold War era Norwegian caves as this piece talks about from RT and it says here that NATO is deploying tanks and military equipment to a series of caves in Norway they have been largely redundant since the end of the Cold War but now the Alliance is stocking up on hardware which will be deployed near NATO's border with Russia it may seem like something from a James Bond movie but NATO has been operating a slick operation in hillside caves built in the Norwegian countryside for decades now if you look into it and uh, however now the US led alliance uh, feels that it, it's time to beef up its military presence to prepare for what it perceives as a Russian threat as they've been ramping up and in fact the patriarch of Moscow Kirill uh, hopes that his recent meeting with the uh, False prophet Pope Francis will lower the tension in relations uh, between Russia and NATO. And uh, so we see even this uh, religious figure, uh, the Patriarch of Moscow, uh, is uh, uh, acknowledging this uh, highly tense situation between uh, NATO and Russia specifically. Meanwhile, the U.S., European Command, and NATO are apparently prepared to fight and win against Russia if necessary, according to U.S. Supreme Allied Commander uh, Europe General Philip Breedlove and his statements that were released uh, just a couple weeks ago. It goes on to talk about how Russia has repeatedly warned that NATO's attempts to expand on its borders as well as more recently uh, amassed troops and equipment constitute provocative acts that are contrary to previous agreements and can undermine regional and global stability. And this uh, U.S. Supreme Allied Commander uh, by the name of General Philip Breedlove, he said, and I quote, to counter Russia, the uh, U.S. European Command is working with allies and partners and is deterring Russia now and preparing to fight and win if necessary." End quote. In this piece here, 
from the uh, Jerusalem Post talks about how Poland has uh, relaunched talks with uh, Lockheed Martins uh, on uh, medium range air missile defense system according to the deputy defense minister and his, what he was uh, quoted as saying in comments published on Thursday and um, goes on to say here that uh, the tender whose value defense officials estimate at around five billion is central to Warsaw's large-scale army modernization program speeded up in response to the Ukraine crisis and Russia's renewed assertiveness in the region. Poland had previously excluded the US Lockheed-led consortium from the tender shortlisting two contenders a consortium of European group the MBDA and Francis Tales SA and US firm Raytheon Co as potential suppliers and so we see uh, the ongoing uh, intensification of militarization over there um, in the uh, Eastern Europe along the borders of Russia as the uh, buildup continues by uh, uh, NATO and uh, uh, allied forces and nations over there in the region more here on uh, Russia-U.S. relations, as it says here. According to a General, the CIA and Pentagon attacks on Russia are caused by the military budget debate in Congress. And it goes on to talk about how the reason for the anti-Russian attacks of the CIA and the Pentagon is the discussion of the military budget for the next year in the U.S. Congress. Russian Defense Ministry spokesman Major General Igor Kineshnikov said on Friday. So again, he's saying they're hyping up this threat to uh, get more money. And uh, at the end of the day, it's just a, another sign of the uh, uh, ongoing uh, demonization of Russia as uh, relations continue to unravel between the two major world powers. And apparently Russia is planning to deploy airborne forces in Crimea on a permanent basis. And we know about the ongoing situation uh, over there. So uh, we see Russia seeking a permanent uh, deployment of these uh, air forces over there. Meanwhile, the Ukrainian president has told the defense ministry to reinforce the border with Crimea in the midst of all this. And goes on to say here that this move is supposed to... Uh, counteract the Russian army's growing uh, capability in the Republic of Crimea, according to the statement. In this piece from globalresearch.ca, originally reported by the World Socialist website, it's talking about how the NATO operation in the Asian Sea is actually heightening the threat of war with Russia. As it says, a NATO convoy under German leadership is to begin operations in the Asian Sea in the next few days. NATO Secretary General Jen Stoltenberg and German Defense Minister Ursula von der Leyen said on Thursday, the official goal of the mission is to complete closure of the Asian to refugees, uh, militarily strengthening fortress Europe against refugees from the war zones in the Middle East. The dispatch of warships to the strategic Asian Sea also heightens the risk of NATO intervention in the Syrian civil war and war with Russia. And in what is being billed as an attempt to repel Russian aggression in the Nordic and Baltic regions, the Pentagon has announced plans to boost its Euro uh, European defense in 2017 with a significant ramp up in joint military exercises with Nordic and Baltic partners, Defense News reported. As uh, part of the expansion, American forces have arranged to uh, arranged for storage in Norway to house heavy equipment, including M1A1 Abrams tanks and amphibious assault vehicles. The U.S. military reportedly deployed uh, this equipment two weeks ago in classified Cold War era caves in Norway, as I previously showed you uh, that report. And this is all in efforts to better equip stations near the NATO-Russia borders as uh, intention, or, uh, tensions intensify uh, over there. Uh, and, of course, you know, we see that uh, many different military uh, exercises going on and what is uh, deemed by uh, military shows of force uh, 
And again, it's right on Russia's borders. In fact, uh, U.S. President Barack Obama is actually, uh, he's been pushing for a significant military uh, increase over in Eastern Europe, citing fears of Russian aggression. And um, as the, the author points out uh, in the piece here, the plan is wasteful and, uh, and an unnecessary provocation. And uh, it goes on to reference the Cold War era type uh, relations and how uh, the uh, relations between the two nations have uh, reached a, a similar point. Uh, in fact, perhaps even maybe a worse point than the Cold War era. And uh, so things continue to, uh, as I said previously, just unravel here in what is nothing more than just signs of the times in, in which we live, my friends. And these war games over in the Baltic area, this is another report talking about them as the U.S. and NATO uh, are apparently ha holding a mock nuclear war uh, uh, drill just on Russia's doorstep, right on their borders, as uh, as we've been saying. And it goes on to say here that uh, a day before the ceasefire, uh, the limited ceasefire in Syria was to take effect. The Atlantic Council, the preeminent NATO think tank, issued a report on the state of readiness of the NATO alliance to fight and win a war with Russia. The focus of the report is on the Baltic states. The report, entitled Alliance at Risk, has the subheading Strengthening European Defense in an Age of Turbulence and Competition. Layers of distortions, half-truths, uh, lies and fantasies, of course, obscure the fact that it is the NATO countries that have caused the turbulence from the Middle East to Ukraine. NATO is responsible for uh, nothing in this report except protecting the peace. Russia is the supreme aggressor state intent on undermining security of Europe, even intent on attacking Europe, an existential threat that NATO must prepare to repel. So this is what they're hyping up. Uh, uh, this 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 uh, think tank, if you will, uh, called the Atlantic Council, uh, is hyping up this threat, and uh, you see what they're uh, as it. It alluded to here they're calling Russia this massive aggressor and how they're undermining the security of Europe and uh, you know NATO is trying to come across as the uh, the good old boy just the only reason they're there is to keep Europe safe no other ulterior motive I mean that couldn't be further from the truth as uh, uh, you know, anyone who studies their Bibles knows where these world events are heading, and you can get into many different prophecies, as we will in the very near future, but you can you can begin to talk about, uh, you know, the Ezekiel 38 and 39, Battle of Gog and Magog, and, and on into, uh, uh, you know, just what's going to be a, a Armageddon in, in a World War III type scenario that will have a focal point over there in the Middle East, and... More war rhetoric here as NATO's military commander has told uh, U.S. lawmakers that Russia poses a long-term threat to the United States and to its European allies and partners. And uh, in a testimony uh, before the Senate Armed Services Committee, U.S. Air Force General Philip Breedlove uh, came out and uh, he stated that Russia is eager to exert unquestioned influence over neighboring countries. And he goes on to make uh, all kinds of other accusations, including uh, the fact that uh, he says Russia has used military force to violate the sovereignty and the territorial integrity of Ukraine, Georgia, and others like Moldova. In Ukraine specifically, Russia continues to use all elements of national power to hinder uh, Kiev, he said. And uh, so this... Uh, uh, NATO military commander Breedlove is uh, uh, amping up the war of words uh, against Russia once again. And so on the heels of these uh, major nuclear war games of the U.S. and NATO allies uh, over in the Baltic region, uh, here we see that uh, over 50 Russian warships and vessels are preparing for uh, military exercises in the Cas uh, Caspian Sea. 
And it says here that Russian Defense Ministry's Southern Minist uh, Military District's press center said that more than 50 Russian warships and support vessels are preparing to begin naval exercises in the Caspian Sea. And, I mean, 50 warships and other vessels. And this is on the heels of the massive NATO-US uh, war games that are going on uh, over in the Baltic region. And so uh, things certainly uh, active. Uh, to say the least over there and one of the things that's been happening is uh, economic sanctions and bans being imposed by different nations and Russia has come out and uh, they've blasted the US for extending sanctions against Moscow over its alleged role in the Ukraine crisis saying the Kremlin is entitled to respond so they're threatening a response to these uh, uh, sanctions and uh, uh, this is just another aspect of the elevation of tensions that's being experienced over there. Moving on here, we see that NATO is, uh, uh, you know, extending their uh, reach, if you will, to some of their allied uh, nations over there in the European uh, regions along the borders of Russia as this military buildup and fortification, uh, if you will, uh, continues. Or uh, probably a better word is, a, a better term is a military strategic positioning, as I often like to call it, and uh, the piece goes on to say, um, it talks about the uh, American-NATO cooperation um, and how there was a, 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 an action plan signed in late 2005 titled the Individual Partnership Action Plan, and uh, Armenia's uh, participation to the plan stipulates periodic consultations with NATO on regional security, the development uh, of the security strategy, as well as Armenia's military doctrine and the improvement of the process of defense and budget planning, along with other issues. So NATO basically, uh, uh, to make a long story short, controls uh, Armenia militarily. And uh, this will, uh, you know, be a... a a little bit of a benefit to them as they are trying to, uh, you know, uh, ramp up their military presence uh, all along Eastern Europe, specifically, as I said, uh, on the borders of Russia. And meanwhile, another uh, NATO military exercise set to commence as uh, NATO's Crisis Management Exercise 2016, as it's called, is scheduled to start in Lithuania on Wednesday. And uh, I believe this was on Wednesday of last week that it was set to, uh, uh, or, or this this past week here, last Wednesday, that it was set to commence. And it talks about uh, how uh, on uh, March 9th to the 16th, how Lithuania will train in its 8th NATO Crisis Management Exercise 2016. And the exercise will rehearse alliance and partner consultation and decision-making procedures at the strategic, political, military level amidst a simulate crisis, the ministry said in a press release. And uh, it says here, CMX 2016 is expected to focus on collective defense against hybrid warfare threats, which makes it particularly relevant to Lithuania, the press release said. Uh, Finland and Sweden are due to take part in the exercise as partners, while the European Union is due to be involved as an, uh, as an observer, according to the press release. And this last piece here I'm going to finish off with before I close talks about how NATO is eyeing a long-term breach of the nuke nonproliferation uh, treaty and how Russia is to respond, according to a senior diplomat. Peace goes on to say that uh, the Russian military will have to adequately respond to Washington's plan to upgrade its nuclear bombs in Europe in apparent violation of a nuclear arms non-proliferation treaty, a uh, senior foreign ministry diplomat said in a media interview. The renovation of the U.S. nuclear arsenals in Europe, masked as a regular modernization, is in contradiction with the terms of the uh, uh, NPT, or the Non-Proliferation Treaty. And um, it goes on to mention that Washington's plan to uh, upgrade 
the 180 B-61s strategic bombs stocked in the European air bases to a modernized B-61-12 version has been implemented as part of the U.S. NATO nuclear modernization program. The B-61s were designed back in the 1960s to counter a possible Soviet threat. So these things were originally designed to counter a possible uh, Russian threat and have since been kept at NATO air bases in Germany, Belgium, Italy, Turkey, and the Netherlands for about five decades. So they've been there for 50 years. And so they're calling uh, now in the hit in the in the heat heat of all this uh, rising tensions over there, um, they're going to apparently upgrade their nuclear arsenal over in Europe, and that's certainly a sign of uh, of the times in what's just a, a steady developing and ongoing tense situation over there in Eastern Europe along the borders of Russia. And so I'm going to close here. Everything that I shared with you will be linked up in the description box below. And uh, it's important, my friends, to understand that uh, as Jesus said in Matthew 24, you know, he said that there would be wars and rumors of wars, nation rising against nation and kingdoms against kingdom. And, and, and he also told us in Matthew 24 to see that we're not troubled because all these things must come to pass. And in Luke chapter 21, Jesus said that when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. I pray that you're one of those few on the narrow path to life that find the truth and that can see these things, discern them for what they are, and look up, knowing that your redemption draweth nigh. This is Joey signing off. I'll be back up with segment number two, and uh, probably by the time it's uploaded in a couple hours. i uh, got to have something to eat first as well. So uh, in segment two, we're going to talk about what's going on in the Asia Pacific, specifically in the South China Sea, and all the way up uh, uh, in the Northern Asia Pacific, uh, in North Korea. So we'll look at all that in segment two to come, which I'll upload shortly after this one. And then in segment three, as I uh, said, we're going to do a Middle East update and talk about Syria, uh, Israel, and uh, some of the other ongoing situations over there that are uh, in line with biblical prophecy. And so until next time, my friends, this is Joey signing off. God bless you. The, the uh, Eurasian Golden Triangle, and I talked a little bit about that and shared a piece with you. And we're seeing this trend just continue to intensify, as uh, I seem to always be saying, but it's like every day uh, things progress further and further. And, you know, uh, conflicts uh, of, of biblical proportions don't just happen overnight. You know, they're uh, years and years in the making, and... Uh, and, and that's what we're seeing with all the strategic military positioning that's been going on. Uh, and I've talked a lot about that, how NATO has been building up their military in uh, Eastern Europe along the borders of Russia. And, uh, and how Russia is, you know, responding uh, accordingly, of course. And um, just so many other things going on. And it's just more signs of the times that Jesus said would precede his second coming. You know, he talked about the wars and rumors of wars, kingdom rising against kingdom, and nation against nation, and we're certainly seeing uh, this as an intensifying a trend and a certain missing that this could be perceived as a threat by Russia and China. And uh, there's a quote here, and it says, Our allies and partners, I think, find it pretty comforting and reassuring that there is a U.S. military presence in the region, which will continue Kirby replied when asked about NATO's move towards the east not being perceived as a threat or U.S. ships sailing uh, into the South China Sea. And it's interesting you see that, uh, you know, they, they're on the, uh, in Eastern Europe along the borders of Russia and then they're on the other side, you know, in the Asia Pacific. And uh, so you can see how they're kind of encircling Russia and China. And... You know, this uh, Kirby uh, fella here from the U.S. State Department, uh, he says that uh, he thinks that these people will find it uh, comforting and reassuring that there's a U.S. military presence in the region. Well, if it's comforting and reassuring, why did 
uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin come out and designate uh, the United States and NATO as threats to national security in a recent document that was signed, and as I previously reported in other videos. And, I mean, and that's just the tip of the iceberg on the tensions that are reaching uh, Cold War type uh, status, if you will. And so, here we see that the U.S. State Department is uh, accusing China and Russia of increasing global tensions as the saber rattling continues internationally here. And uh, the U.S. military test fired its second intercontinental ballistic missile in a week uh, back on Thursday night, seeking to demonstrate its nuclear arms capacity at a time of rising strategic tensions with Russia and North Korea. And this piece goes on to talk about that. Uh, as the headline says here, that uh, they're testing these uh, intercontinental ballistic missiles to stress its power to Russia and North Korea. And you can see how even North Korea, if they highly a sign of the times. Um, but m moving along here, uh, it was reported that a U.S. State Department spokesman has taken a swipe at Beijing and Moscow, basically saying that their militarization is making the world unsafe. And uh, John Kirby said this is a view shared by much of the rest of the international community. So we see this uh, now with the United States, uh, uh, the U.S. State Department has accused China and Russia of increasing global tensions while NATO is intensifying globally, uh, as many people are well aware. And the piece here uh, goes on to say that spokesperson uh, Kirby for the uh, U.S. Department of State told a press briefing on Thursday that U.S. military expansion into Eastern Europe and the South China Sea, which we'll talk about in the next segment, is at the, be uh, the behest of its allies. While dis Greetings, my friends. Evangelist Joey Balmore here for another Signs of the Times report. And uh, this will be the first segment of probably three segments that I'm going to upload this afternoon. And in this particular segment here, we're going to talk about the U.S. and NATO and the deepening rift with Russia, China, and even uh, Iran. As I've previously mentioned, we're going to look in depth at that. The second segment, we'll probably talk about the Asia Pacific uh, from the South China Sea to North Korea. And, of course, in the third segment, we're going to touch on the Middle East and a lot of the uh, important developments going on over there. So uh, let's just uh, jump right into it here in this first segment where we're going to focus on the whole um, rift that's going on between not only the U.S. and NATO on one side, but on the other side, you've got Russia, China, and Iran. And I did a video recently uh, titled...